so many times the agent or the 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 having to deal with the the view from the inside or the 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 role of agency like when it comes to time thinking that you can replace the block universe with the actual experience of time you know clocks don't tell time we use clocks to tell time so maybe that even like the fundamental nature of time can't be viewed from the outside that there's a a new physics theory that is going to come from that comes from this agential informational computational view um i don't know but that's kind of what i i I think it would be fertile ground to explore yeah like time is a really interesting one this time is really important to us humans what is time yeah that's a right what is time so the way we have tended to view it is we've taken this is what when herschel talks about the surreptitious substitution we've taken einstein's beautiful powerful formal system for viewing time. And we substituted that for the actual experience of time, right? So the block universe where like next Tuesday is already written down, you know, it's in the block universe, the four dimensional universe, all events are already there, uh, which is very potent for making certain kinds of predictions within the sort of, you know, the scientific framework, but you know, it is not lived time. And, uh, you know, this was pointed out to Einstein and he eventually recognized it. Very famous meeting between Henri Bergson, who was a the most famous philosopher of like the you know twenty early twentieth century, and Einstein, where Einstein was giving a talk on relativity, and Bergson, whose whole thing was about time and was about duration, he wanted to separate the scientific image of time, the map of time, from the actual terrain, which he used the word duration. Like we humans were were. Duration for us is full. It's it's sort of, um, it's stretched out. It's got a little bit of the past, a little bit of the future, a little bit of the present. Music is the best example, right? You're hearing music, you're both already anticipating what's going to happen and you're, you know, remembering what's going on. There's a kind of phenomenal structure there, which is is different from the representation of time that you have with the formal mathematics. And what, uh, you know, the way we would look at this is that the problem with the surreptitious substitution, the problem with the blind spot is it says, oh, no, no, the formal system is time. But really the only place time appears is with us, right? Where we're time, you know. So having a theory that actually could start with us, you know, and then stretch out into the universe rather than imposing this imaginary third person view back on us, you know, could that's a route towards a different way of approaching the whole problem. I just wonder who is the observer? I mean, defining what the agent is right. in a- any kind of frame is difficult. Is difficult, right? And so that, but that's the good work of the science ahead of us, right? What, so what happened with this idea of the structural invariance I was talking about? So, you know, we start with experience, which is irreducible. There's no atoms of experience, right? It's a whole. Um, and we go through the whole process, which is a communal process, by the way. There's a philosopher, Robert Kreese, who talks about the workshop. That starting in like the 1700s, 1600s, we developed this communal uh, uh, space to work in. Sometimes it was literally a physical space, a laboratory, where these ideas would be pulled apart, refined, argued over, and then validated, and we went to the next step. So this idea of pulling out from experience these thinner, abstract, structural invariants, the things that we could actually do science with. And it's kind of like, we call it an ascending spiral of abstraction, right? So the problem with the way we do things now is we take that, those abstractions, which came from experience, and then with something like, you know, a, 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 a computational model of consciousness or experience, we think we can put it back in. Like you literally pulled out these super thin things, these abstractions, you know, ig- neglecting experience because that's the only way to do science. And then you think somehow, oh, I'm going to put, I'm going to jam experience back in and, and ex- you know, have a, an explanation for experience. So do you think it's possible to show that something like free will is quote unquote real if you integrate experience back into this physics into the physics model of the world? What I would say is that free will is is a given. And that's the thing about experience, right? So one of the things that Whitehead said, I really love this quote, he it says, it's not the job of either science or philosophy to account for the concrete. It's the job to account for the abstract. The uh, the concrete, what's happening between us right now, is just given. You know, it's just, it's presented to us every day. It's presented to me. If you want an explanation, fine, but the explanation actually doesn't add anything to it, right? So that free will in some sense is the nature of being an agent, right? To be an agent, agency and autonomy are sort of the two things that are, 
You know, they're, they're, they're equivalent. And so in some sense, to be an agent is to be autonomous. And so then the question really to ask is, can you have an account for agency and autonomy that captures aspects of its, its arising in the world or the way it and the world sort of co-arise? Um, but the idea, you know, the reason why we argue about free will often is because we already have this blind spot view that the world is deterministic because of our equations, which themselves, we treat the equations as if they're more real than experience, you know, and the equations are a paler, you know, they don't corral experience. They are a thinner, you know, representation. As we like to say, don't confuse the map for the terrain. What's happening between us right now in this, you know, all the weirdness of it, that's the terrain. The map is what I can write down on equations and then in the workshop do experiments on. Super powerful, needs an account, but experience overflows that.